Hello, happy Saturday. <laughs> Hope you've all recovered <laughs> from the onslaught of four of us. But that is what we're like when we're all together. Right, it's the first time there's been four of us together, I must admit. So I've just been shopping and uh, I've been in Costa, mango and passion fruit. Uh, coolie, I think they call them. Or no, it's not a smoothie, it's a cooler. Gorgeous. I am so addicted to these. Gorgeous. Excuse me. And I just got back at the right time because Manchester has just decided to give us some more liquid sunshine and it's bitter pattering. <laughs> it's not pouring, just bitter pattering. Well, um, I did mean to make a video in the week, you know, just me showing you what I'd got and stuff like that. So there's quite a lot of things to get through today. Um, I have got some books and magazines, but I won't be able to show you all of them today because there's just too many and too much. <laughs> so I'll just concentrate on um, what's going on. Well, I finished the cardigan off and it sort of looks beige in some lights and it looks grey in other lights. But Sue and I went through the whole of my collection of buttons and we just can't find anything that looks right. So it may finish up with um, kind of brown style leathery ones or it may finish up with metal buttons because there just isn't a good match. You think it's beige, it's not beige. The beiges are all a bit yellow. You think it's grey, it's not grey. <laughs> So it's not going to get on in my Etsy shop until I discover whether it's what colour of button I'm going to put on it. I can't sell it like choose your own buttons and so on, can I? <laughs> exactly, yeah. Anyway, last night I, it carried on yesterday, my full day. I went to a friend's um, 50th birthday and I had a really good time. Apart from the fact, you know, I'm an old fogey and the music was a bit loud. <laughs> But everybody else was okay, but you know when you finish up trying to lip read and, and yell at each other. So it was just a titchy bit loud for me. But apart from that, I had a really good time. And uh, I had such a good time, in fact, that I slept until about 11 o'clock. I need to get my son to check my alarm settings because it appears to be on. And it appears to be um, on the maximum kind of volume. That's my mobile phone um, alarm. But the last three days I've slept through it and I'm thinking, am I just getting tuned into it or what? Should I change the, the tone, although it's a really loud ringing noise, or it should be. Um, so I'm going to get him to um, check the settings basically, yeah. Right, this is what I've just got and I haven't even opened it as you can see, it's come direct from the store. Uh, it's the latest edition of Simply Crochet and it comes with some very sort of luminous bag handles. <laughs> I don't think it's quite my taste in bag handles, but you never know. And it comes with the little crochet edits, which is um, called Bold Bags. Four designs to hook. Um, now, I'm not a lover of doing tapestry crochet because for some reason all my animals slant. <laughs> slant. They look as though they're leaning all my animals. It's something to do with the fact I think you're supposed to turn around and go the other way, whereas I go round and round. I think that's what it's to do with. I did read an article on why, you know, it slants like that. Oh, and there's a pom-pom wreath, a free pattern with it. That's one for Sharon. <laughs> Sharon likes doing the pom-pom wreath, don't you, Sharon? There you go, look. Have a good look. <laughs> I am the pro got a fly on my head now. I am the proud possessor of uh, two Christmas wreaths from Sharon and an Easter wreath. So thank you very much Sharon. I do save them and they do come out each year so you know. <laughs> That's called Rough Diamonds. Uh, oh that's what you use the handles for on the dot. As I say, I may use the handles for, for something different completely. I wouldn't be, I don't think I'm really overstuck on any of these patterns, but one never knows. Or you could use the yellow handles for that one. I am not a great lover of bags. The only bag I like is the one that's done with like a granny square. Um, there's a picture of one on my Urban Gypsy 
page on Facebook uh, of the one I made up. It was like pinks and lilacs and everything. I made it for a friend of mine. She took it on holiday with her for as a beach bag. And I, when I made that one, I thought, I'm going to make myself one of those. They're very nice, lovely. About five years later, I still not made myself one. But then again, what am I wearing today, by the way, before we get into the magazine? It's a me, partly so. Don't ask me where I got it from because it's just out of the head. Um, the yarn was some very inexpensive yarn. I think I picked it up from one of the bargain stores. I'm not sure which one it was. Um, but either way, it has some lovely Lurex in it. Wouldn't be me without a bit of sparkle. I decided against a, um, a necklace today because it's got the fancy buttons and I didn't want to swamp them. Oh, it's no good, I'm going to have to have another drink. I mean, you didn't want to tune in, did you, to see me having a drink, but I'm very thirsty today. I treated myself to a breakfast out at Costa, and whilst it wasn't baking, which usually makes me very, very thirsty, it was um, Cumberland sausage and caramelised onion. It was lovely, it was a toaster, and it was lovely, but it's made me thirsty. This is so thick it's giving me brain freeze. Not that I've got much brain to freeze, but it's giving me brain freeze. Right, back to the Simply Crochet. It is issue 62 and I just picked it up this morning so it must be current. If you want to look at the front colour. I'll just have a quick flick through. Oh, there's a bigger, bigger picture of the, uh, the wreath in pom-poms. Uh, let's have a quick flick. I'll just show you what's the articles in it. Now that is really pretty, but I don't know whether I'd have the patience to. I have done woven crochet, but I find it very, very difficult actually to stitch the the tails in neatly. But maybe with this one, you actually make the tails into the fringe. I made a lovely cardigan once, but that was a lot, lot younger, done in the plaid. But where I had to stitch the ends in, it, they just kept coming unravelled. You know, you stitch them backwards, forwards, you stitch them whatever way. I stitched them every way that it tells you to do on YouTube and they still fall apart with me. I am the queen of tails, they always poke up. And there's the mittens to match. But I do like the actual stole, I think it's lovely. But whether I have patience to do it is another matter. Oh, and I definitely won't be making myself a mini skirt, lovely as it is. <laughs> or any elbow patches. Oh, we're on a real tartan theme this month, aren't we? And then there's a, a bag. It must be woven crochet month. Let's see what else we've got in here. That's just a, the, the mini skirt. Now that's pretty, but I'm not sure it's just an advert or not. I think it's just an advert, actually. I'll let you know if I come across it later in the book. <laughs> For those who like amigurumis, I mean, I love them. I keep saying this, I do love them. I just don't want to make them here. In fact, I got a magazine the other week, and it was all... I make a room is really apart from two shawls when I got it home. So I just popped it straight into an envelope and sent it down to Karen Casalistic because she does I make a room is not me. Um Oh I don't think I want to ruin my shoes by putting a bit of crochet, I'm sorry folks, but if I've paid a X number of pounds for a pair of leather shoes, I'm not gonna stick a bit of crochet on the top of them. No, not for me, sorry has no sleeves and it looks kind of unfinished around the sleeve area. No, not for me. Oh, even worse from the back. Sorry. Me not like it. Oh, well, I don't know whether I'd tackle it, but I do love it. I think it's really me, that, absolutely me. It's done in, it's either sheep's jeeps or scages. I never quite know how to pronounce it. It's called a secret garden. It's done in 
silk, cotton and polyester. Sounds very swish, doesn't it? Oh, that's quite cute if you've got any mittens. A little fox. I presume it's a fox. It just says animal, but I think it's meant to be a fox with those kind of colours. Oh, it's got a little tail on the back. <laughs> How cute is that? Oh, now if you're into, uh, I suppose it, you could do it in black if you were goth or something. Again, it's not something that I would really tackle. I could be a princess, couldn't I? Or goth. Or punk princess. <laughs> One for you, Sean. <laughs> um, crochet socks. I have made crochet socks, but I must confess, even though I'm not fond of knitting, I do prefer knitted socks. Crochet socks just don't have that sort of stretch appeal, you know, that um, the knitted ones have. This is just showing me the new British yarns of different things. They're always too expensive for me, so I tend to gloss over those. Um, tablet cover, I presume it is. My tablet never leaves the house, so I'm not going to make a cover for it. Right, I think we're getting to the end of it now. This is just telling you how to crochet. And that is what is in the next issue. And I didn't find that Peyton's pattern for these, so I presume you have to buy that. So, that's an advert for Dera Moores. I must admit I've gone off them because of what happened with my last order. They're going to have to pull the socks up, you know, they're losing a lot of trade. Right. What did I get? I went, I got tempted by offers on Kemp's. It's e Kemp's, by the way, if you want to know. And they have, oh, it's raining really hard now. And they have some really fantastic bargains. This was a bit darker grey than what it was advertised on the pages. But it was £1.09. And it's supposed to be a double knitting. And it's got the lurex in it. I don't know if you can see it or not. Obviously discontinued colour. I'm sorry I didn't take a photograph of Sue's. Sue got one called chocolate, but it was more like mustards and browns. I think I told you we shared the postage, which we do sometimes. If I've got to get something for an order, or she wants something, we tend to combine, you know, so that we get to the £25 and we get the free postage. Now this one I do like, and I'm sorry I didn't buy more of it, because it's one of the you know the sale lines on Kemp's which they tend to have and then don't have again that one I really do like the reason I'm not keen on the dark grey was it was actually pictured as a light grey kind of like that kind of light but in grey I mean Sue loves it but but I have to stop thinking of things that I like because I make things to sell so I should really think about other people's taste. So that's me gonna smack on the hand. This was an order from uh, Wool Warehouse, which always comes in these lovely bags. And again, Sue had some thin from here. I can't remember what she had. Anyway, I ordered this. I absolutely love, love, love this yarn. It's James Seabrett. It's cotton on. And it's a 50% cotton, 50% acrylic. And I've used this many times myself. And it washes like a dream. Absolutely washes like a dream. It's not the cheapest of the, of the yarns. It's about 150, 160, something like that for a 50 gram ball. But it does wash great. I had got this because this is for an order for a customer. She wanted a lilac. And these were my semi-indulgence, you know, you have to bump the postage up, don't you, to get free postage. Which means you spend more. But these are, you've probably seen these in America because they're lion brand. The mandala, or the mandala, whichever you want to, per, you know, call, call it. And it's 150 grams and it's got 590 yards on it. And I've got two. But this is what I mean about these, um cakes is they look so different don't they because they wound differently 
I mean, um, I probably wouldn't make a garment out of these. This is probably going to be shawls. Because I just don't know whether you'd finish up with odd... F might be okay in a sweater, I presume, because the, it would be, like, bigger. But in a cardigan, you'll get, like, one part of the front and then a different part, unless you sort of juggle about them. I'm not in the mood for juggling about, so I think it's probably going to be a shawl. For, for Etsy, not for me. I honestly have got so many shawls, I could wear a new one every day for about a month. I do love my shawls though. Saves on the heating. <laughs> and then, although I haven't ordered for months and months and months from iShawls, I got tempted. Purely because it was cop and it was on sale. Sell price girls, if you go on ice, you still have it, I think. Um, it's natural cotton and it's uh, 200 grams and it's got 408 meters on it that's one color they don't have colors um, it just says natural cotton turquoise brown shades white 50559 if they still got that one with ice you've got to grab it while you can because it's not there sometimes when you look again so that was the first one um, this was the second one. This is called Natural Cotton Brown. Looks like crack carpet, surely. Crack, crack. Oh, khaki. Swimming glasses. Khaki gold white. And it's 50564. That is a little more startling than what I thought it was. When you, this is the trouble you order online, isn't it? You're never sure what you're going to get. You think you know what you're going to get, and then it comes and it's nothing like what you thought it was. But whilst I like it for a short or something like that, again, it's too startling to me for any, a garment. Now, these two, on the other hand, oh, Sue suggested that it, they would be nice in summer tops, you know, for later in next year or whoever lives in the hot sunny climate <laughs> those two Sue has really fallen in love with the blue one this one is natural cotton blue shades grey it's 50556 and it's got shades of denims and greys I don't know if you can see I'm not taking it out of the packet because with ice once you take them out of the packet you can't get the damn things back sorry for swearing um, but you can't <laughs> and I want to put them in the stash room as they are this one's 50557. It's natural cotton, maroon, pink shades, lilac. I do like that one. Now I think she's right with the blue and the pink that they would make nice summer tops or short sleeve cardigans or things like that. I should explain, it's quite, it says it's a number three, but to me it looks quite fine. It looks almost fingering weight to, you know, four ply tools in, in the UK. But I will see when it comes to be made up. I mean, Sue says so she thinks that would be okay in like a short sleeve cardigan, but um, I'm not convinced. Not convinced. It might be a bit patchy. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I suppose it depends how long the colour change is between. Whereas these, you know, don't look as long as some of the colour changes I've had before from ice. Um, what else have I got? Oh dear. Well, I did finish a, um, an open work top for my friend who, whose birthday it was last night. But as I gave it to her, I can't show it to you. But I will put a, a photograph on my Urban Gypsy Facebook page if you're interested. Because I can't link photos onto uh, this video. And what else did I get? Oh, excuse me, leaning. But everything's over here. I got some labels, they're not personalised labels but they're just handmade labels, you know for putting on hats when I make them for the winter. I got those off eBay. You can get them with your name on but if you get them with your name on you're paying like three times the price. Um, that one's handmade and that one's a handmade. 
they're just little bags of them. I just saw, well, I got a book. I'll, I'll show you the size of the book, but I'm not going to show you through the book today. But I will, oh, I will show you the book another day. Um, I got a book called My Boshy, and they're all full of hats. And I suppose originally when this book was bought, it did come with labels that you sew on the hat. But of course I bought this second hand, being as I'm so tight. But I mean, there's nothing wrong with second hand books. This one does because I've never been touched. And it was 14 99 originally. And I think I paid about maybe six or seven pounds for it on uh, eBay. But they do have, um, in fact, I've just finished making one of these, which I'll show you in a few minutes. Uh, I just made that one but the yarn must be very lofty even though it says it's chunky uh, that's all my variations written on the side I always write them in pencil so I can rub them out I don't like defacing a book at all but if I do deface it I have to write in pencil I won't write anything in a biro or a, a ballpoint pen they do sell this um, uh, what's he called this my boshy yarn at purple linda but they're small balls and i think they were about 2.99 or 3.99 a ball which would make me have to pay sort of like probably seven to eight pounds to you know do the hat which wouldn't make it um feasible for me to sell them on on etsy because i would be crocheting them for about less than two pounds because by the time Etsy takes the cut out of it and PayPal takes the cut out of it I'd probably be crocheting the whole hat for about a pound you know <laughs> which I'm not prepared to do anyway I did make the hat up in ordinary chunky which was um, Stylecraft who if you follow, follow Karen Casalistic she loves it and so does Sean Sean's Crafty Corner we're all lovers of the Stylecraft and I think um, Zoe does too so I did make the hat, but of course I had to increase the number of rows. Um, and I did a little bit more on the increasing. I mean, I followed, um, we've got a hat chart pattern somewhere or other that tells you how many inches you're supposed to be for, you know, before you go for the crown and how many inches down. But this did turn out, to my mind, a little long, but then I've got a small head. So, when I, and I'm not going to try it out. Um, so I can't really judge because if they fit me they don't always fit anybody especially somebody who's got a lot of hair there's a lovely set of shapes for sale on Etsy where you buy the shape in like I presume it's in plastic and it's got a hole and if you measure around that way that's supposed to be the top of the head and then the shape of it is like that which is supposed to make the shape of this two which is great if you make your own hat patterns up, but I didn't I didn't really want to pay £15.50 for a set of them, plus the postage. Much as they would have been useful, so, you know, me being me is thinking cardboard. <laughs> get your protractor out, which I don't have, but, you know, get a saucer out or something, draw around it and then do the rest of it and cut it out in cardboard. But, I mean, if you're interested, they are on uh, Etsy, those, and... Um, I don't know what they're called now, but you'll see them anyway. Very, very good idea if money's not an object to you. Anyway, with that hat, I made um, a scarf. It's not a very long scarf. And in retrospect, I would have made it narrower and made it longer. But again, these things, you know, it was the first set I've done for the winter. And the gauntlet gloves came out a little bit big for me. But again, again, I've got tiny hands. So because they were a little bit big, I decided I would put a little, excuse me, that's one of Gigi's hairs that gets everywhere. I decided I would put a little bando around it and a little button fastening, just to bring it in a bit on the wrist. But um, they're just a little bit big for me. But when I've made them before and put them up, uh, when I used to do craft furs, people used to try them on and they were a little bit tight on them because apparently I've got tiny hands. So, I made a pair of big ones, so it's a set. But that's the first, I'm going to make more sets, you know, for Etsy, because Sue and I were discussing this 
in between having the big chat, chit chat that we did. Um, you know, what we were going to make for Etsy for the coming autumn and winter. And we're thinking of, um, you know, accessories more than actual garments, although garments are my, my thing. But I was thinking more along the lines of like people buying for Christmas presents, for example. And uh, we were thinking of hats, scarves, shawls, neck warmers, things like that. And as you know, Sue is the champion of neck warmers. <laughs> I don't know whether she's a champion of hats. I've not seen her make many hats, but probably because she doesn't wear them. Watch this space. We shall see. Anyway, I'm not going to go through the books because today, because I haven't got time. But I'll show you what I've bought, just the front cover, so you'll have to watch this space. That's the My Boshi book, which is full of all sorts of beanies and very good ideas. But as I say, I have to adapt them slightly because that my boshi, even though it's chunky, seems to be a little bit sturdier or thicker or bulkier than our UK um, chunky. But I think maybe in the US your, um, your chunkies are thicker, yeah. That one there, now I do love the one on the front cover, but I wouldn't put all the flowers on. Um, I think it's a bit of overkill, you know. Um, I do like the colours that they've used for the stripy scarf though, but I'll show you inside that book next time. And it's the same with this one, this is the uh, inside crochet book and it's actually got a Tunisian um, pattern on the front. Now that is, oh gosh, now that's a very bad advert actually because you can't see what the wool is. It's a Derebo's ad again. But I'm sure you can get the wool something else. Oh, it's Imagination, Sirdar Imagination, the yarn is, which I think the colours are very, very pretty. With the magazine came Colourful Crochet, which has got those patterns in it, which is hats. I mean, that's handy for me to make hats and that, and that one is. Um, that's a scarf done sort of, I would say more on the diagonal, and then that's a poncho -y neck warmer, whatever you want to call it. I did get uh, a book called Crochet Dress Up. I was thinking of making things, you know, for my niece, niece and nephew. They're not my niece and nephew, they're my great niece and great nephew. But they're kind of not dress up -y enough, if you know what I mean. I would think that maybe my niece might think that I'd made them seriously for them to wear out in the street. <laughs> I mean, I, I think the, the pirate one, I think Joe would like that, but you know, I think that I would hate the you know the children to want to wear them out in the street. You know what I mean? <laughs> of her thinking I was you know seriously making it. Um, you know, I mean they're quite nice, like the Snow Queen and that. Anyway, I'll go through this in more detail, so don't get too, too excited because I'm missing it out. Uh, these were buttons that I sent for thinking that they may go on this cardigan, but when they arrived, both Sue and I went, mm -mm, not right. See what I mean? If, if, if they're brownish, they're coming out kind of yellowy. See what I mean? They're yellowish. Maybe not look it on the, there they are. Maybe not look it on the camera, but they are very yellowish when you put them on the, on the garment. I'm a bit of a fanatic really. I like things to match. But yet the brown ones I got don't look quite right. Sue and I both decided that these didn't look quite right either. Because they're very brownish. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to wait and see. I've got some dark brown ones coming, really dark brown. But they've got like a fretwork cut inside them. And I think maybe that if the actual colour of the yarn can shine through the holes in the button, you know, that it might look okay. Oh, I also got those, which is like a ribbon that you cut into pieces, although they haven't really given me much room to cut them into pieces. And uh, so the one. They are Zoe, made in England with a little crown on it. <laughs> we are proud of being, well, English, I would say. I'm not British, I'm English. Part of Britain, part of the UK, but I am English. I know it's been a bit pedantic, but on all of our forms, we have to say that we're British. Now, British covers 
Scotland, Ireland, Northern Ireland, sorry, um, England and Wales. But I don't like to lose my heritage, which is English, yeah? Maybe I'm just being picky. I went into my, my ancestry, you know, DK, uh, ancestry DK, ancestry UK, or whatever it is, ancestry anyway, dot com. I would probably find that I'm anything I don't think I am. <laughs> if I had lots of money, I would go into it and I would do my family tree, but it all costs money. And you've got to order copies of birth certificates, marriage certificates and everything like that. And I, that would be kind of a bit of an expensive hobby and it would eat into my crochet time. So although I would love to know where my DNA actually comes from, because I don't trust those things where you swab around your mouth and send them off. They're not really accurate. I think they're more fun than accurate. Um, I would just like to go really into, you know, like that Who Do You Think You Are program. I would love to go into that and find out exactly who, I know who my grandparents were, but I have no idea who my great grandparents were on either side of the family. People didn't talk about it in either of our families. So it's kind of like a mystery, you know, there's sort of myths and uh, I won't say rumours. Um, yeah, there are more myths and things that got passed down through the ages. But you know things get changed when they're verbally passed down from generation to generation. So I wouldn't like to say that anything that my father passed on to me, my mother never passed a thing on to me. But my father used to tell me stories of his family, but my father was a great storyteller. I won't say a liar because he wasn't a liar. He was just a storyteller, if you know what I mean, a raconteur. So he would like add bits. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> no, I've not been for my chest x ray yet. He would add little bits of, like how you call it, embroidery. To make the tale sound better, he would add a bit. So while there was a whole lot of truth uh, in all of his stories, you could never take everything he said as being actual gospel. Can you hear the bells ringing? Someone must be getting married. It was a lovely day for them. They did. I hope they got married about half hour ago because it keeps raining now. Sorry, I'm going to have to have a drink and coffee. So I would love to know if there was any fact in the stories that my dad used to tell me. It would be nice to know if I was actually French, Scottish, Jewish in origin. There's all rumours of all those kind of, even a bit of Irish I think, thrown in the mix of me. But they're all stories, they're none of them are factual facts which I would love to know whether I am. I'd love to be part French. <laughs> that I would love to be. Would make me more interesting, wouldn't it? I mean, the fact I wave my hands around a lot could be either French or Jewish, couldn't it? Because I do do a lot of this business. Um, so that could be either of those two. And I can talk the talk when I want to, so that again is a Jewish trait. And my mother had a wonderful nose, you know, a wonderful um, Roman nose or whatever. So she could be the bit where the Jewish bit comes in, but we don't know. All rumour. All rumour. Well, that's another book I got, one of my bargains, you know, second-hand bargains. But they, they don't look second-hand, do they? I mean, honestly, they don't look as though they've even been read. Um, I will show you what's in this one because I think I've got about just about time. I haven't got time to go through them all. This has got... Some things in that are nice, some things that are a little far-fetched. I mean, I don't like the actual sweater, but yet I do like the colours that they've used in the squares. So you could sort of use the squares on something else, couldn't you, really? That is a little bit nightmarish, but if you could do it maybe in more subtle colours or um, I like bright colours but I don't like this it's funny isn't it um, I would see it like more in more subtle shades of, of, of shades I mean I don't mean all one colour but 
I just think the colours that they've chosen there are too garish for me. You know, I would choose more shades of a shade, if you know what I mean. Um, what else have we got? Yeah, that's the back view of it. I think it's a little busy for me. But that is just me. That one I like the triangles, but I don't like the shape. I don't know which way she's wearing it, but it looks sort of baggy and shapeless, you know. Maybe if she was stood up and she wasn't actually bunched up like that. It doesn't look very thrilling, does it, that way? Although I bet it could look quite nice if she was standing up. That one I do like. Um, sort of a lacier type of... Um, I presume it's something finer because it says organic cotton. But it's on a 3mm crochet hook. don't know what that is in US. Maybe an F, is it? I'm not sure. No, F is a 350, isn't it? Um, I don't know. E. <laughs> that I do like, even though it's big and baggy. I do like the shape of that. I'm not saying I would do those colours, but I do like that. Big and baggy is my kind of styling. That one's done on a 350 and it's done in double knit, so that's fine. Got, that's me sorted. That one again could be nice, but I think the colours they've chosen are horrible. They're not horrible colours as such, but I just don't think they go together. As I say, I will keep choosing things that I like and not that other people like, which I shouldn't do, should I? I should take into consideration other people's tastes. That's a loose sweater. I'm wondering about the age of this book actually because everything's got such wide sleeves. It's done in double knit that one. Let me see if I can see when it was published. Oh no, 2015. I was thinking earlier than that, you know, because everything's got such wide sleeves. Again, once again, I don't like the colours they've chosen. But Sue was saying the same thing, so it's not just me. Now that one is a poncho, but it seems to be done in uh, pieces. You know, like, I don't want they're sewn together. But the, uh, the schematics shows it like that. Now whether it's just where the decreases are, whether they are all done in panels, I'm not sure. I haven't read it. Once again, we're up to going to circle bits again. Again, I don't like the colours together, but that's just me. Don't let me put you off if you like those colours together. That one, you can't really kind of see the pattern. Looks as though it might be nice. Oh, the bells have stopped. They must have got married now. Or they've gone in. That's the front cover. One, it's like Sousa's are really like that one. I like that one as well. And Sue likes that, but she doesn't want to do all those tiny little squares. I suppose you could make the squares larger, couldn't you? And um, have less of them. There's a heck of a lot of squares on there, isn't there? Yes, there's 35 blocks with blue flowers and 34 blocks with pink flowers. So that's 69 blocks altogether. Oh, I would get, I've lost patience. I might get to 30, but then I would really have got lost. And the trouble with me is once I put things down, I don't pick them up again for ages. Sorry, Ephraim. Um, now that, I'm not keen on the shoes, but look at that skirt. That is just me. Absolutely me. That is so gorgeous. I've got bohemian taste, but not bohemian money. Everything I love is bohemian, and it's about £100 for a dress, you know, so that right out. Again, they don't really show what these leg warmers look like. They just show them inside the boot. And I'm not sure whether she can't zip the boot up or she's trying to show the pattern off by leaving the zip open. Not really sure. 
suppose if they were thick, they, you'd have a struggle, wouldn't you, unless you got very slim legs and big boots. I have trouble doing the zips up anyway without any leg warmers. Um, it's probably got, yeah, it's double knitting it's done in. But it's still, I mean, there she doesn't, you can't tell whether she's done the zip up or not because she's showing the other side of the leg where the little buttons are. I mean, I would like a pair of leg warmers, but purely just because when I'm on the scooter sometimes, my trousers ride up and there's that gap, you know, between the end of your boot and the beginning of your trousers. So I would just like a pair just to put on when I'm on my scooter. Those are, it's a belt that it's done with like crocheting round circles, I presume. You need five plastic rings that are 50 millimetres on the inside and 55 millimetres on the outside. Now where you would get your five plastic rings from? eBay maybe, or a good haberdasher's, which we, I don't have around here. I think this book's all about flowers, isn't it? Handbag with flowers. I did watch a lovely... Craftsy had a day where all of the videos were free that you could watch them for one day only. Couldn't save them or anything, you just had to watch them. And, and there was a lady there doing freeform crochet and she was making a bag. And she, like, taught me more on that little video. Um, than all the other videos and books I've bought and seen. You know, she showed how you fit things round and how you do things. She was much more informative than anybody I've ever known. That's another handbag. I mean, I've even bought books on freeform crochet and just gone. <laughs> <laughs> and that's another one called a bling handbag. I think this woman's absolutely obsessed with Karen Adden, Adenhoff is she called, Adenhoff, I'll show you how you pronounce it, but it's just called Crochet Ideas and Patterns for Women. As I say, I bought it second hand so I don't need to still get it on it. There's another bag, it's sort of like a, there's a name for that kind of shape but I don't know what it is. We used to have baskets in that shape when I was a young girl. And then that's a, a hat. I don't like hats with floppy brains. I don't know why. Now I do like that, except it's probably got the bubble stitch, which I'm not a great fan of. Like it, love it. It's one of those that I start off doing and then get the hair off with it. That's the top of the hat and then that's some little earrings, I think. So I think we're at the end of this book. Now. Oh, no, we're not. That's, those are crocheted over the top of, you know, those wide plastic bangles that you buy sometimes and then wonder why you bought them. Um, that's to crochet over the top of them. I can't do those because I've got small hands, but I've got big wrists. And when I buy things like that, you know, rigid um, bracelets and that, I can't get them. Well, if I get them on, I can't get them on. Well, that is unusual, sort of more boho -y. Done in very, very fine, almost like embroidery thread or very fine crochet thread. With lots and lots of beads. <laughs> and it comes with now I was looking at and thinking, how on earth did they do the edges? How on earth did they do that? They're bracelets that are bought. It's only the pattern for the bit in the middle, you know, the granny square bit. So it's a bit of a Swiss, really, isn't it? Anyway, that's it. That's the end of that book. As I say, I will show you the other magazines and the other books in another video because it just won't. It'll just cut off if I go any further, and I know it will. Um, the girls are all coming back, um, but I don't know when you'll get all four of them together. It's easy to get three together, <laughs> but very hard to organise four together. Um, but they are coming back because they had such a really good time and we never got around to um, fattening up my 
polystyrene my not this one I've got a new um, Taylor's dummy whatever you want to call them um, but unfortunately when they come they never have any boobies they just so I'm going to find an old bra and put it on her before we start and stuff stuff the boobies before we actually start making her bigger yeah um, but because Sue was late because she was waiting for a delivery of something rather special which I will show you when she brings it to show me don't worry about that you will get to see it but I don't want to spoil the surprise by telling you what it is um, so when we come she comes back and she's not late because we we're all waiting about an hour for her to come naughty Sue um, that's why we didn't get around to doing the uh, the mannequin <laughs> or dummy or whatever you want to call her and um, we had a brilliant time we were just laughing it was the first time all four of them had been together it was the first time Kelly and Christina had met and it was the first time that Christina and Sue had met so it was a great uh, time was had by all as you can tell so I hope you enjoyed joining in with our laugh it was like that the whole time that we were here we just did nothing but laugh and it absolutely does you good you know and then of course I followed it on by going out in the evening which was another I met up with some friends I don't see every day and uh, we had another good laugh and uh, except I came back you know with my ears buzzing and <laughs> couldn't hear a thing I was like deaf um, I'm getting old I'm an old folky I really am the music was just that bit too loud <laughs> But everybody had a wonderful time. There's videos up from the people who were there, like where they were all dancing. And um, The DJ is the partner of the girl who's, who's 50th it was, and so he was choosing all the kind of dance music because there was lots of um, children belonging to the family there as well. And uh, every, they were up dancing. I mean, they'll probably have slept till, this, till tonight, probably, because they were up and dancing. They were having a great time. A lot of them had glowing necklaces on and glowing armbands, you know those? I don't know what they call them. I think you have to activate them and then they glow and sparkle. And yeah. So they were all dancing around with that. But I was pulling Sarah's leg like I was saying. Uh, I'm having my present back, I said, if you don't uh, cut that cake soon. We don't cut that cake. Anyway, when she cut the cake, it was all rainbow. It was all different colours and shades. So she brought me a big piece and she said, shut up, everybody else has had a smaller piece than you. <laughs> You've had the biggest piece for being cheeky. <laughs> Nothing like being cheeky, is there? At least I got a piece of cake. <laughs>